Hello, hello, I'm Woody. Welcome to the Man in the Goat YouTube channel. Today, we got a special one for you. We're gonna unbox, set up, do a quick overview of this Craftsman 10 inch table saw. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos because I'm coming up with some new ones. I covered them before in the last video, but some of the things that are coming from the Man in the Goat YouTube channel are gonna be how I ran lights and power to this shed. I'm also gonna be going over some cornhole board builds, some quick and easy DIY cornhole boards, along with many other things. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do it. Also, if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It's not hard for you to do. It'll take you a couple seconds. And we would greatly appreciate it. All right, so let's get this thing open. All right, for all of you, table saw nerds out there I got some specifications for you this is a 10 inch table saw from Craftsman 15 amp it does have a 90 degree max cutting depth of three and an eighth inch the 45 degree max cutting depth is two and a quarter inches and it does come with a detachable holding stand I actually purchased this Craftsman table saw on sale from Lowe's for $159 I was not able to use additional discounts on top of that, so something to be mindful of. If you're going out to get this saw and it's still on sale, you may not be able to add on to your discount, which is a shame, but it is what it is. So let's get to the unboxing. Those are some of the specifications. It does actually have also a three year limited warranty from Craftsman. We build with pride. So right out of the box, First cut. Let's see what we got. What does this thing come with? Instructions. I highly recommend with a table saw. You read these. We'll do that later. We got the push stick for actually pushing our materials through the table saw. Definitely want to hang on to this. Don't throw that out. All right. So right off the bat. Once I got this thing all unboxed and we got a good look at it, some of the things, bring her on in here. Some of the things that I'm, you know, right off the bat. So looking at this, this is a sticker. I'm not really a fan of that. Wish it was actual metal. Cause this thing probably could easily peel up. If you got this wet, it'd probably bubble up. So they cheaped out on that. This is metal, obviously. Thank goodness, cause if that was plastic, it'd probably be complete junk. But the housing is all plastic. So again, they got the sticker for the bevel, the bevel guide. Not really a fan, not really a fan. So anyway, all plastic, plastic, plastic. The gears, can't really tell if the gears are, yep. Looks like they're plastic too back here. So that's what you get for, you get what you pay for $159. But we're gonna start setting this thing up and going through the instructions and we'll get back with you on some of that. All right, for the stand, some important things to keep in mind. These actually are different sizes. You have two different sizes of the top part of your stand. This one is smaller than this one. So make sure you have the bigger one flat on a table, this one down on the table with your bar, your L bar laying down flat like this. Your other one will face out because they need to hold the saw on this edge and then on this edge. So it's important to have this facing the right way. You want your bigger adjustable leg on the outside on your bigger stand, on your bigger side of the stand. So make sure that's there. All you do is take the leg, slide it in. So layout is gonna be important for being successful. I've heard a lot of people complain about this saw because of this, st this stand and trying to put it together. But if you follow these steps, it will help you. Okay, when you're putting your brackets on, so you got it all laid out. When you're putting your brackets on, you're gonna use the bigger bolt. It comes with these smaller bolts. That's to attach your saw to the stand. This is for the brackets. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure this, I don't know. Notch. Notch or something, yeah. It's actually facing in towards this outer leg. And there's two holes here. This is for the notch and this is for your bolt. So this needs to face down like this with the notch going to that hole. 
slide that in. Now you gotta try to feed your bolt through all these holes. Which can be a challenge. Bam. Just like that. Okay. Alright, first thing. Well, not first thing. One of the things we have noticed trying to actually attach the saw to the stand mine came broken so this bolt is not machined properly on the end so this wing nut will not actually secure correctly it won't go any further because this isn't machined right so there you go so what you get you get what you pay for but what you're supposed to do is basically run this through and then put your wing nut on ours won't so I'm gonna have to get in contact with Craftsman or, or see if I can't go find this bolt somewhere. And uh, it's unfortunate. All right, something else. It's got plastic gears. You can see the gears for lowering the blade, and raising the blade, are plastic. Which, you know, for it to be uh, a cheaper homeowner grade table saw, which is what this really is, you gotta you gotta cut cut costs somewhere, and where they did that was with the gears. So they're plastic. They did come nicely lubed though. For the, your actual pulling up your riving knife and installing or replacing this blade to get your insert out, you got this mechanism here. Which I actually kind of like this, that it's on the table and not on the insert. Some of them I've seen are on this. But you just switch it to the unlock, pull out your table insert. And then you got your riving knife. So what you want to do when you get the saw is actually raise it up. And then this piece here, flip that up. And now you can move your riving knife up and down. Up and down. Not very really easily, I might add, but bring it all the way to the top as far as it'll go, and then you switch this back down. Now your riving knife is up where it needs to be. All right, all right. So once you got your riving knife in there or raised up, you actually want to put your insert back back in. And keep in mind, you're going to definitely want the power to be unplugged while you're doing all this. Don't want to lose any of these digits. All right. So this just slides on to the very back. There's a notch here. You want to line that up, pull your piece, pull the red, I don't know, what would you call that? Uh, Locking mechanism, I guess. Yeah. And then, should be good. These things don't lay the same. For your blade guard, so you got a plastic piece again kind of kind of cheap but this plastic piece needs to lay in this groove here so just line it up and then pull your red locking mechanism Change. I apologize for the noise. We got some construction going on back there. For your blade change wrenches, they store right here. So kind of handy, kind of like that. And then your miter actually can store right here on this back rail here, which is kind of annoying. I'll, I will say, like if you have it like this, it's not going to make it because of this piece. So that's kind of a frustration, to be honest. But can store there, and then your rip fence can store right here goes right in there and your sub rip fence actually clips on to this piece here so and I can show you guys that there you go which I probably won't use that much rip fence absolutely is a must so we're gonna actually attach that right now all right so our rip fence just sets right into these little grooves here and actually this dial is already jacked up. I can see from the factory it's crooked. So I'm gonna have to adjust that 
looks kind of crappy. <laughs> but this is where you put the fence, line it up, lock it down. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure, we're gonna adjust this and we're gonna see how close it is to the blade. Now, you will see a lot of people don't use these guards. Use it, don't use it, that's gonna be up to you. The anti-kickback, use it again, don't use it at your own risk. But in order for us to check our actual height to the, or our distance from the fence to the blade, we're gonna have to take this off. All right, whenever you set up your table saw, a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to check when you first get it. How does your rip fence line up with the blade? So get on in here. Sir, we got this set. We're eight inches. Our cutoff material is always going to be to the right of the fence. So you want your cutoff material to go away from your fence, away from your blade to avoid any injuries or mishaps. So we're showing eight inches. We want eight inches on this side of the blade. That way we get eight inch cuts. If we look at our rip guide down here, it's off. It's crooked from the factory. It's off. It's not showing eight inches. It's showing, I don't know, eight and an eighth, a little off of that. So we're going to try to adjust that to get that right and then you also want to check that the blade is square so I put this up against the blade and it actually isn't too bad it's pretty close it's not too bad I'm set at zero on my bevel I'll go ahead and show you guys how you adjust that you just flip this lever down and there you go you can do your bevel cuts it does have positive stops at 45 and at zero. We're gonna set it to zero. Tighten that back down. We're ready to go. All right, to adjust this so that we have the eight inches that we were looking for, making sure we're set, loosen that screw, and this is adjustable. So I already loosened it, adjusted it, just tighten the screw back down. Now we're setting it at eight, we're eight there. And we're eight here. Now really, you probably want to check this each time you cut, to be honest. The way this is all cheap and plastic, it's probably going to move again. So before I do cuts, I'll probably check to make sure. Again, to keep all those digits, turn it off. Make sure it's unplugged. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually rip this board. This is for a project that I'm working on already. I just want to take eh, like a sixteenth, maybe an eighth of an inch off of it. I've already got my fence set up where I want it. So let's see. Let's get this thing running and see how she cuts. All right, here we go. All right, so we tested the ripping feature of it. Now let's see how it does on the miter cuts, which I'll tell you, I heard some reviews where people didn't like this miter gauge. This flows smooth for me. People complained that it was catching. But I'm not having that issue. I actually kind of like it. I just got this scrap piece. So I'm not looking to do anything specific with it. I just want to see how she slides through and how she works. So we're going to test that now. All right, not too bad. All right, final thoughts on the Craftsman table saw. Again, it's $159. I mean, you really can't expect perfection or high quality parts on every piece of it for $159. But I will say that the buttons 
they're okay. I kind of like the ones that flip down, you know, you got to flip them up. Those are a little safer, I feel, on other brands. I will tell you though, you kind of have to push the power button in and hold it a little bit for the saw to engage properly. And that's a good thing because it keeps you from bumping it and just turning it on by accident. The saw is unplugged at the moment. Um, whenever you're gonna be messing around with it, always wanna make sure it's unplugged. Some key things to keep in mind is whenever you're doing your miter cuts, get your fence out of the way. That way nothing binds up. Just do it with your miter. And then also when you're ripping, make sure you're ripping for your cutoff piece to go away from your fence and all of your other stuff. You don't wanna rip with your cutoff end, the end that you wanted to discard, going into the fence because it's going to bind up and you're going to hurt yourself. Table saws are extremely, extremely dangerous. You want to take extreme precautions whenever you're using these things. <clears throat> and especially, I feel, probably with these cheaper ones, I think that that's kind of the funny part about it is with the more cheaper products, you know, the safety mechanisms aren't as great. And the people that are going to buy the cheaper ones are like your DIYers, you know. So this is definitely a homeowner grade DIY table saw, not con not contractor grade whatsoever. Uh, definitely is not meant for that, not meant for heavy use. Uh, I think it's gonna be great for, for what I wanna use it for. It ripped pretty nice. I actually didn't, I felt like it was pretty smooth. Uh, the miter is smooth, all that stuff worked just fine. Yeah, I would say for $159, it's actually a really good value if you're really not going to use it, you know, all the time. Maybe once a week, once a month, if you use the table saw, it's going to meet your needs. I, I do feel it's actually not a bad value. Definitely disappointed in that bolt, though. Come on, Craftsman. You build pride, build a better bolt. I mean, geez, Louise. All right. I think that's it from, from Woody with his... Uh, new table saw never owned a table saw before used them many times but uh never owned my own i got the cheapest so why not you know all right please if you actually enjoyed this video give it a like it doesn't take very long for you to do that and then also consider subscribing like i said there's going to be more projects coming out some really great ones notification bell always want to have that turned on why would you want to miss this mug also share it if you would if you felt like somebody wants a cheap table saw give them this video and then maybe they'll consider purchasing the craftsman i will tell you craftsman's reinventing themselves maybe i'll do a different video on that they're trying um they fell a little short with this table saw though to be honest i think it could have been better uh, but for 159 bucks like i said get it on sale i wouldn't pay 200 dollars for it that's its retail price i wouldn't pay that but 159 bucks on sale, eh, why not? You know, it's nice to have around. Nice to have a table saw. With that, I will see you guys later.